Hello, 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 and welcome to our live coaching session tonight. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us and tuning in. As you are coming on, if you could be so kind and let me know where you are chiming in from. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I am going to go ahead and um, send out a reminder email really quickly. So if you can give me a second as you're joining, let us know that you are uh, where you are tuning in from. God bless you. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. God bless you. Thank you so much again for joining us tonight. I appreciate you being here with us. And um, I hope you have something to write with and also something to write on. We are live on Facebook and then also on YouTube tonight. This is the day that the Lord has made and I will rejoice and be glad in it. God bless you again. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Really excited about meeting with you tonight. God is so good and is worthy to be praised. He is so good and worthy to be praised. I'm telling you, he is seated high. He is looking down on us and he is so concerned about you. He is. He is so concerned about you. He is so concerned about your life and you really walking out the plans that he has for your life. Amen. So we're going to start with prayer as we always do um, for the coaching session. Again, I'm popping it in just as a reminder, and then we're going to go ahead on and get started. So thank you again for those of you who are joining. As you're coming on, let me know where you are tuning in and you are chiming in from. This is birthing season, you all. Birthing season. This is birthing season. I'm telling you, God is doing incredible things, right? And he wants to make sure that you you are in the right position. He want to make sure that you are in right alignment. He want to make sure that you don't miss out on nothing that he has for you, right? He does. He want to make sure that you are good and that you're not miscarriage. You're not having any spiritual miscarriages, any spiritual abortions. So you know what? While on that note, let me go ahead and go before the Lord for prayer um, right now. So Father, we just thank you so much just for your grace and your mercy over our lives. We thank you so much for your redemptive power. Yes, God, you have redeemed us and we thank you so much for your son, Jesus dying on the cross for us. We give you the glory, the praise, and the honor that is due your name. And we thank you so much, God, just for having mercy over our lives, God. Even during times when we didn't even deserve your mercy, Lord, we thank you so much just for you showing up because it could have went a different way, but you said no. You stepped in. You stopped it, whatever that it may have been, the plans of the enemy. You stepped in, and so we say thank you, thank you, thank you. We are so appreciative. We're so appreciative of you, Father. We love you so much. We thank you so much for your precious Holy Spirit. We thank you for your guidance, for your leaders. Yes, your leadership in our life. We thank you so much, God, for you taking us higher, God. We thank you so much for you promoting us. We thank you so much that we can fall at your feet. We thank you so much, Father, that we can just lay our heads on your chest. We thank you so much that we can just lay our heads in your lap. Yes, because we are your daughter. So I pray tonight, Father, for your daughters, God, that yes, Lord, as we come running to you to seek you, to your ways, your ways and your plans, to just be better servants in the earth, that we will be better, yes, 
um, daughters of Zion, that we would be better, yes, wise. So those of us that are wise, that we would be better, yes, servants unto you, God. Be better mothers, be better business women, be better friends, God. Yes, be better co-workers, be better servant leaders. I pray that prayer in the name of Jesus, amen. And amen, 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 amen. So for those of you who were on last week, I shared with you all a vision, right? And um, I had jacked the word up a little bit because I really did not understand much of it. But one thing that I did is I understood enough about God to know, wait a minute, I need to look at his calendar and um, the word of the Lord was about um, Elul, which is the time that we're in right now, right? And so just really quickly, for those of you who were not on last week, and then if you were on last week, it's always good to hear things over again. I thank you right now that um, his, his, his grace and his mercy is just sufficient. And so last week, while my husband and I were praying, I think it was last Tuesday, while we were praying last Monday or Tuesday, while we were praying, I saw the father's hands and he said, ask as you will. And so, but I knew that this was something different. It felt different. It felt like a special time. It wasn't just for Greg and I, it was for his body. It was for him. And I said, I need to look at what time of the year it is. And so that is what I did. And I found out that we were in the time of Elul, right? Where the father, he is in, the king is in the field, right? And there is an asking, right? During this time, there is an asking, but also during this time, this is also the time of great repentance, all right? This is a time of repentance. And it is a time for you to also like really rend your hearts to the Lord, hear instructions, all right? For the next year, to for you to gain such clarity for what he will have for you, for you to gain such direction. So this is the time of the year. You know, in the United States of America, in most countries, we have what is called the new year, okay? But also in the Hebrew calendar, the Jewish go by different times and seasons that even that most Christians don't really adhere to. I would say over the last decade, right, there have been more and more believers, Christians looking into these times of the year, also celebrating joining in, you know, even in our ignorance, because we don't know everything. And what I found out was, in fact, yes, I saw his hands. He wanted us to ask, but he wanted to make sure it's also in alignment with his will for kingdom purposes, not just asking for anything, right? But then I also found out, not only was this also the, um, the season of the year, the time of the year, which means Elul, but also the Teshuvah. <laughs> and so I read something to you last week. I'm not going to read the same article, but what I am going to teach you on tonight, right? If you will allow me, and I know that it is going to help somebody because for those of you who have really been feeling this tug from God, this tug from Father, this tug from Him to get things right, to lay things down before His feet, come to Him a different way, making sure that your posture is one of great humility. That word was on me all day yesterday, the word humility. Then I heard, I believe it was prophet Joshua Giles even speak of humility. And then right of just a, a few moments, my spiritual mentor, she, she texts me and in one of the texts, the word humility came up again. So this is a, such a great time of the year um, as it pertains to even examining. You know, for those of you who've been even in this coaching over the last, I think it was three weeks, 
we did a teaching and I heard the word reset, right? Which also falls in this time of the year, which is why you may, may, you may be feeling a pull. I got to get some things right. I got to get some things organized. I need to do some, 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 some natural cleansing. Amen. Somebody, some spiritual cleansing, all of that, all of that is alignment to the time and season that we are in in him. Okay. And so if we're not careful, many times we can miss things. Right. But I believe that the father is really wanting us to understand how he moves even more on a deeper level, how he flowed, even, even on a deeper level. I, I do. I believe it. Right. Some, some of us can do some things uh, from a place of ignorance. Right. I don't, I don't say that to put anybody down. I think I shared with you last week, I'm ignorant to a lot of things, even the times of the year um, in terms of this teaching. However, I know God enough and have been walking with him enough to say, wait a minute, over my life, walking with the Lord, there have been times where during this time of the year, like out of the summer months leading to falls, where I have felt him differently there have been times during this time of the year I have seen and had visions of scales. And I'm like, it seems like you wearing some scales, daddy. What, what is this all about, right? Because this is also a time of the year where it has been told that the books are open, right? Over our life. This is also a time of the year, right? Where promotions or also demotions take place, right? And so I just got to be transparent. I'm not going to get into all of my business with you, right? But I want to get into it enough for you to understand. Oh, hallelujah. Because if, if you are a part of this coaching and I am to mentor and to coach you into places where you can grow greater in God, I'm talking about greater with God, where your relationship with God will be deeper, right? Not your relationship with me, not for you to seek me, not for you to look to me, but you to look up. You're to look to the hills from what's coming your help, knowing that your help coming from him. And if I can share any of my shortcomings, right? If I can be transparent enough, well, it will provoke somebody else. Wait a minute. I got to go after God. I got to set some things aside. I've got to carve out this time for the Lord, the spirit of the Lord, the Holy Ghost, the Lord Jesus Christ. Then, 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 then it is, it is well, and it is worth it. So last week, and again, not going to go into the whole, um, what has been going on with me over the last few days but I got a rebuke. Okay. And so, you know, one thing about the Lord, and I was sharing this with my husband, I was like, whoo, father show a vision one day and two days later, there was a rebuke that came with it. Right. But how many of you all know this? He chastened those he loved. You see the father sometimes will cut people off and you don't even know why you've been cut off. But like with this rebuke came instructions for me, right? And, and to make a long story short, for those of you who have been, because I've been doing a lot of reflecting myself personally, this is also a time of year of reflection, okay? I want you to put that word down. This is the time of the year where you, God don't want you just running over into the, look, the, the, the new year, right? Just have it, not having dealt with anything, not having to put it all on the altar, put your heart on the altar, right? And he knows everything in it. Anyway, <laughs> he does, right? This is not the time of the year. We just to keep on staying busy, 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 right? But not really understanding. Well, wait a minute. How did I get here anyway? I'm doing this, but when did this happen? I'm responding like this, but when did that happen? So this, so he, 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 he got into my business, right? And basically he was showing me, I'm doing this because you're chosen and I have so much more for you, right? And I want to make sure you still have to follow proper protocol. I don't care how anointed you are. Oh, amen, somebody. And then a day after the rebuke came, I get this beautiful blue and black feather for those of you who are in the coaching group, you saw it where I think it was Brandy who had the same feather, the same color, but I was very careful 
about posting because I said I need some time to understand this because I don't just post everybody's posts in the group. And especially if it may be something that can pull anybody away or pull someone into distraction. So when she received the same feather two weeks prior, when I got it, I said, wait a minute, there's a woman of God in the coaching group that got the same feather, right? And so, so anyway, I, I say that because during this time, as I was reflecting, as I was thinking about, wow, Father, you really got me hard. You know, it was just some harsh words that he was saying. And then he reminded me also of the ministry of the angels by sending a total different feather that I'd never seen before. It was a feather for those of you who are watching by way of YouTube who have no clue what I'm talking about. Maybe you've seen me for the first time. I wrote a book on the angels. Matter of fact, let me let me show it to you. And then I'm going to get back into still being transparent, but we're going to get into this teaching tonight. So I wrote a book by God's grace on angels. I started receiving angel feathers. Um, 2016, 17, they just start falling for angel feathers, just white feathers. They just start falling. And then, then I got a bronze feather, gold, some gold feathers. Then it started getting gems from heaven. And so I got a lavender feather recently. And so someone asked about a feather, but I didn't want to post it in a group because I'm very careful about guarding people eye gates and ear gates because just because it may have come out of the supernatural realm or maybe just because it looked like it's from God's kingdom, I still got to be very careful and be very cautious as a coach to share with people what, what I know, what I don't know. Right. And I didn't know, so I didn't share it. But when I saw it that night, the, the Holy spirit began to minister to me and he began to say, this is, see, this is why like my walk. And then for those of you and I, and I may seem like I'm rambling, but I know that y'all catching this in the spirit. And especially for those of you who are prophets, you are God's mouthpieces, apostles, right? Evangelists, the pastors, the teachers, you're fivefold. You are chosen by God. You have to follow proper protocol. I don't care what sister so-and-so is doing. You cannot do things the way that sister so-and-so is doing them, right? Even everything that is good may not necessarily be godly, right? So you have to make sure that you are in the up and up. Your relationship with God, it is good. You're not being distracted. You're not being pulled off. You're not straying, right? So what he was showing me, and this is the transparent part, right? And, and I'm going to say this too. Please don't nobody say, um, um, <laughs> well, you know what? I'm, I'm not even going to go there. It was like the father said, don't worry about them saying that. The Holy Spirit was like, don't worry about them saying that they, they do. He, he's the one that looks down at individuals. But he was showing me that I was getting distracted. So... This year, and I posted this today, um, this year, I went through a lot. My husband getting part of his intestines removed. We didn't know what would happen. I, I didn't know what would be his fate. We, we laid in bed many of nights wondering about him. No one knew. We, it was a lot of sleep, sleepless nights. God brought him out. Praise God. Um, you know, to hear the C word, that was a lot. And then right after that, our income was snatched overnight. Right after that, there's just a lot going on. And so it was as if I'd just been in a place of just running, you know, just going to get back, just, just doing, right? When we get busy and I hope I'm helping somebody right now because you have to understand when there's a mantle of grace over your life and you have people that are attached to you as well, you can't do, right, what you want to do. When you are a child of God, chosen vessel of the king, right, then there is a responsibility. And last week, another thing that he had showed me was that to whom much is given, much is required. So when the 
anointing of God is on your life, right? Then that anointing is there. The more will also be required of you. The higher you go up in the spirit realm, the higher God takes you up. That means there is more that's also required for you to do. So you got to keep this thing tight and you got to keep it right. And so basically that was what he was saying to me. You can't afford to get distracted. Yes, you've been hurt this year. Yes, you took a lot of blows this year. Yes, a whole lot happened to you that you didn't even really process, but I'm going to need you to sit it down, slow it down, come before my presence, get into my presence, lay your heart before me, put those things before my feet so that I can help you, right? So that's that's what he was showing me. He said, and instead of, right, did I go through it with grace? I would like to say I did, especially for those of you who have been following me. You have even been a part of the inner circle. You've seen me. Some of you have sent me messages, right? Did I go through a lot of it with grace? Yes, I did. But there were some things that I did wrong and I don't want you to do them. And one of those was I pulled away, even from him when I didn't even realize that I was doing that. That's what the rebuke was about. Okay. Can I be just transparent? Can I, can I be transparent? Can it help someone? So, so, so during this time of the year, oh, hallelujah. This is a time of the year for us not to be pulling away at all. Right. But this is the time of the year where we're to run the run. We know, we know it does not take a profit or a prophetic voice to tell you that the spiritual climate, it is different, right? And I believe that things will even shift for the worse. I do. I personally believe that, right? So we've got to cut off the distractions, right? If you got to download an app that will give you different times of the day where you just shut everything down, I got to go before the Father. I've got to humble myself to get in His presence. Call it what you will. Some people may say that girl is crazy. It ain't that deep. Yes, it is that deep. And yes, it don't take all of that. Yes, it does take all of that. Because when the enemy is trying to take folk out around you, then you better have somebody that is close to you, or you yourself better be in a place where somebody can hear God. Somebody's got to hear God. Somebody's got to have a holy and a consecrated life where the portals are, uh, are open from here, right, to heaven. Somebody got to. Somebody got to be in a place where they are allowing their will to, to be under subjection to the will of the Lord. Yesterday I was reading and I believe it was in Romans 8 where it talks about the spirit, right? Where it, it lusted, the, the flesh it is always a, a fight against the spirit of God, right? What is real? What is true? What is pure, right? What is holy? The flesh within us, there is always a fight, right? But somebody got to understand that, yes, it is that deep. For those of you who have experienced people in your family or your friends saying, that's the deep one, well, yes, I am, right? because I got to hear from God. I got to know what he is saying. I got to obey him, right? It is that deep. It is. Daughters of Zion, it is that deep. And I don't care who they are. I, I promise that's even be that's even a part of this walk. You will be persecuted, right? For the decisions that you make that are decisions based upon the kingdom speaking to you. The Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, and then also Him releasing holy angels to talk and to minister to you. Right? Do this, go this way. Don't do this, right? Am I helping somebody tonight? Right. So we have a, a work to do. So this time of the year, it is, is it is such a time of the year that is a time of consecration. It is a time of us being reminded. Right. That we're to lay down our life, being reminded who we really are. Right. I personally believe I personally think, too, that social media has really affected so many of God's people, even his children. I've been saying, God, deliver me from this. I feel like I'm addicted. OK, can I just be real? 
I'm not addicted to alcohol. I'm not addicted to drugs. That's not knocking nobody else that may have an alcohol problem. There are real addictions. Some people are addicted to sex. Some people are addicted to controlling other people. So some people are, yeah, that's also an addiction, right? Controlling other people. You can't control the actions of nobody, right? Laying down your idols, letting the Lord know, I don't have no idols. There will not be another person before you, God. There, you know, no other God before him, all of it right repenting so over the last few days i've just been pulled away really reflecting examining this is the time of the year that we're in this again is the time of the year where we also the, the, the father is also promoting or demoting can i say that and I'm going to be honest, even with, with all of you all, I told you I was being transparent because somebody up here need to see this, right? Because we're not perfect. We don't get things right. We're in a fallen world. We have a lot that's pulling for our attention and our time, right? I, I said, you know what, Father, if I'm not promoted, if I'm demoted so that I can go back to the bases and learn some things that I will gladly accept it. I, I told him that, right? Because my thing is, I want to make sure that I'm right and I'm doing things right in his eye, not man's eye. I don't care what anybody else may say, anybody else's opinion, but his eye. Amen. You all get that. Y'all feel that. So what I wanted to do um, briefly, I wanted to teach you all um, and this is coming from an article. I don't know this enough, meaning I didn't go through uh, all of the teaching myself on this, but I did feel some oil on this particular article. I said, okay, God. So it is by um, David Wilbur. Okay. And it is um, about the season that we're in. And, and I wanted to say all that and be transparent to you because I want to be able to connect the dots. Some of you have been feeling this, but you may not be able to put word to why are you feeling like that? God is showing you different things. He's, you feel like he's calling you in more to seek him, but it's a little bit stronger. Why is that right now, right? You feel like he's even saying, put your knees down at my feet. Why is that right now? It's a little stronger. Well, it is the season of Teshuva, all right? And on the Hebrew calendar, the month before the fall feast, which is the day is called Elul. We talked about that. In the Judaism, this month is traditionally associated with the theme of repentance. Going one way. But turning, so going one way, but turning and going another way, which we as believers, we understand that when we do the call to repentance for us even to enter into the kingdom. So now I'm going one way, but now I've got to turn and do another way. So it's a theme of repentance or in the Hebrew, teshuva. It is a time of reconciliation. It is a time of intro perspective. But it is also a time for, and I think Dawn is on here. I know she'll love this word because she has a whole anointing on Esther and how you got to just prepare yourself. Like, So it is a time of um, pre pre preparation, right? So perspective. what does that mean? Being mindful, journaling, self-monitoring, <laughs> How can I do this thing better? Woo, I, I, I failed some tests. You know what? I'm not going to beat myself up over it, but I failed some tests. Yup, I sure did. I was not humble. I didn't honor the person that I was supposed to honor the way that God wanted me to honor this person, whoever that person may be, right? Uh, I, I uh, mismanaged some stuff. God, I mismanaged you. I mismanaged the anointing. I mismanaged the grace that's on my life, right? I mismanaged... Um, people, I mismanaged my children. I mismanaged my spouse. I mismanaged my my spiritual leaders. Right? Can I just can I just teach tonight? Can I teach somebody? Can I help somebody? Right? Not that you're to wallow in that thing, but repentance, thinking about it, reflecting. What could have done? What could have been done differently? What could have been said different? How will I move different the next time this same very thing is presented before me? Okay. Many people think of repentance as simply turning away from sin. However, the biblical concept of the teshuva is much deeper than that. Turning away from sin is certainly a part of it, but the focus is different. Teshuva literally means to return. The goal is essentially to return to the Lord. That is, restore unhindered relationship with him. 
Mm. Can we all just say, whoo, Lord, we, we need, I, I know I need to do that better. Go get a place if it's your closet, right? Many of you may not have a bedroom, uh, a bed in your room that's just for God. Do it. He loves that. He so loves that. I'm telling you, if you do not have another room that you've made for God, for God, I'm telling you, do it now. It may be, again, a closet. It may be just a set place, right? It may be just a small place in your personal bedroom where you tell the children, this place right here, don't even come here, right? This is a place right here just for God, me and God, right? Well, we're going to get into it with some things, right? This is the place just for, I'm telling because that's what I see. Like some people, you may just have like a, just a little square, right? Just one area that you know that you have sanctified and you have prepared for the Lord. Okay. The goal is essentially to return to the Lord. That is to restore unhindered. I'm going to read it again. Restore unhindered fellowship with him. Turn off your phones. Like even the other day, I realized I said, "Well, let me." I took some music into the room, and then I got distracted. A notification come up. See that kind of stuff, y'all. We gotta. We have now. For those of you, I commend. For, I commend you if you are not distracted like that. I praise God for you, right? But for some of us, and I'm just being so real because I really want to help somebody. Oh, hallelujah. See, this is how you do get elevated. This is how the mantles fall. This is how, right, you go into places and then the atmosphere change, right? Because you brought in with you the spirit of the living God and the spirit of the living God will dwell right with you. And the spirit of the living God will dwell in your midst. And so for those of you who are seeking and help even for your business, right? When you get your relationship right with God, the portals will open for the business. And when you begin to do the business, because the spirit of the Lord is there and the anointing is thick, hallelujah, then the clients will come. That The presence of the Lord will begin to attract people even the more to you. The customers and the clients will come. The deals will come. God know how to send people. He does, but he is saying in this hour for all of us, get in my face, get in my face. Just to the teshuva literally means to return. Okay. So unhindered fellowship with him. It is a divine invitation, right? To the prodigal son. That's us. All right. To come back home and embrace the father's presence. And that heart to return to God is the actual process by which we also turn to turn away from sin. Right. The Bible says in, let me pull it up. <laughs> Let me put a know it's in, okay, so I thought it was in Peter, so it's in James. So in James 4 and 7, it said, I feel heat coming out of my hands. Thank you, Lord. It says, submit yourselves, therefore, to God. See, a lot of people, we're like, okay, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Yeah, but how do you resist the enemy? The first part. It says, submit yourself before God. So you can't resist nothing if you ain't submitted to a holy God. Then, then we, a lot of times we don't read verse eight. It says, then draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. For those of you who have leaders and, and, and mentors, right? Coaches, right? People that you look up to, where you know that that when they show up, it's going to be glory moments. The presence of God will be with them. Why? It, the presence of God didn't just, didn't just show up just because God just want to show up. But it says, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. That's somebody who lives a consecrated life. That is someone who lives a life that is pleasing to the Lord. That is someone who is dying to self. Not my will, God, but thine will be done. He is doing a work in that person and that person is letting him do that work. So when, when the presence of God show up, 
Things begin to move. Things begin to shift. Things begin to change. It also says this, cleanse your hands. Ye sinners, that's what it says. All of this around, resist the devil and he will flee from you. It says, submit yourselves to God. It says to dry not to God. You can read it yourself. Verse seven and verse eight, as a matter of fact, let me put it on the screen, okay? Let us read it together. Y'all wanna read it together? Let's read it together. Oh, hallelujah. See, this is a time of the year too where we really see how sur surrendered um, we are to, to God. This is the time of the year. And I'm telling you, I've had to do some repenting and some reflecting. And I'm like, wait a minute. Things are a little bit out of alignment. I don't want them to be out of alignment. Okay, I'm putting it up here. I hope I'm ministering to somebody tonight, right? This, this is the Bible. Submit yourselves to God. Resist the devil. See, we hear that many times. Oh, resist the devil. He will flee from... But we can't do it in our own strength. Just like you can't obey God in your own strength. It takes the Holy Ghost. Why did Jesus send him? Oh, hallelujah. It says, draw not to God and he will draw not to you. Cleanse your hands and purify your hearts. That's what it says. Cleanse your hands and purify your hearts. And get this. Now, there's another part that didn't get put in here. It got, cl it got cl cut off double-minded, right? So even with our thinking, okay? Not doing one thing, but saying one thing, making sure that our walk is really matching our talk. This is that time of the year where we're to examine ourselves. And I don't want anybody to get in a place of condemnation, okay? But conviction, okay? Allowing God to come in. The other day, he was working on our hearts. I said, wow, this is interesting. Now I know why. I'm like, wow. A lot of times we don't know why he's doing what he is doing, but he has got, he knows all. He know we needed it. He know that there's been so many of you who've gotten beat up. You're battle weary. You've gone through warfare, high levels of warfare. You've not had only had to fight um, demons, right? Or, or get into battles with them, but principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, right? Those are different levels. Oh, hallelujah. Glory be to God, right? But he wants you to be clean. He wants you to be purified. He does. So in Romans 6, 17 through 18, see, he's helping me tonight too with this teaching. Cause I didn't know if he would show up like that, that rebuke that I got the other day. I said, woo, <laughs> he's helping me tonight. I can feel him. You all feel his presence. So the Bible says in um, Romans 6, 17 through 18, it says, but thanks be to God that you were once slaves of sin. He's speaking while I'm reading this. Thank you, father. And I hear you, daddy. He, he says, but thanks, he, he just like said some stuff to me, like, like come up higher. That's what he just said to me, you all. But thanks be to God that you who were once slaves to sin have become obedient from the heart to the standard of the teaching to which you were committed and having been set free from, um, having, been, having been set free from sin have become slaves of righteousness. Isn't that beautiful? Right? So, so, but thanks to God that you who once were slaves of sin have become obedient from the heart, right? So it's a hard thing. Clean up my heart, God, <laughs> to the standard of the teaching to which you were committed and having been set free from sin have become slaves of righteousness, right? So now that is right standing with God. What do you want me to do? Ask the Lord every day. What do you want me to do? I lay down my plans and my will. I lay them down, right? I lay them down. Self-will, right? That was another thing that he was showing me. I'm being transparent. Can I just bring you into my world so that I can help somebody tonight, even if it's one person? I begin to say, wait a minute. God, I've been getting a little selfish, meaning what Lanika wants, right? What, what I want to do. I, we, we God cautioned us with that. My thing, even the other day, I was like, oh, I got to tell my coaching clients this, right? And I don't believe that he want people to be 
impoverished. But I said, you know what? Even if, if, even if it was not in the will of God that you be a millionaire, if, if that's not his will for your life, right? Then accept that thing. Self-will, what I want, my personal desires, right? What do I want? How I want this thing to feel, right? We're going to go through some stuff. We're going to go through some stuff. I'm like, oh God, if, if it's not on your agenda, if you don't want me to have it, God, I don't want it. Like I only want what you want me to have. There are some prophets, but I know I'm called by God as a prophet. God showed me back in 1998, you all, 1998. And since I have been, even with the prayer call, do you all know even why God allowed me to even have the prayer ministry and go for so long? A part of that have been my dying to self, um, just the persevering of the thing. Even in the midst of the wealth being transferred in the elevation, God was showing me. And during this time, I didn't even know what he was doing. I just found this out here recently as I embarked upon the 15 years he was saying that has been your offering to me in the midst of promotion, in the midst of elevation that, 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 that was showing me, meaning God, that you were still going to serve me publicly, that you were not going to allow no money to change your mind about what it is that I was supposed to bring to him. Worship, because what happens is, and people are so easily to say, oh, when I get such and such, then I'm going to do such and such. No, you won't, because it it will, that thing when the rubber meets the road, baby, it will, you will know it when it happened, right? People are so quick to say, well, I did such and such, then I'm going to do this, right? So he was showing me recently after the years of being consistent, after the years of continuing to serve him, he was like, that was a sacrifice. I wanted to see, would you still be faithful to me in spite of, I wanted to see, will you still get up in the morning and pray for people? So when you were on the food steps and you did it, and I knew it was hard, daughter, for you to pour out to people when I elevated you and I promoted you to multi-millions, I wanted to know what was in your heart. Heart. I say all of that to say, I know that I am a prophet of God, right? I've not tried to make something happen. There have been times, I don't even know why I'm going this way tonight. I don't even know because I didn't shift it into a whole nother thing. But there were times I have had enough money to bring in a whole production crew and we could have launched the best of the best. I could have worked with the best of the best. I know, but God didn't tell me to do it. He didn't put it in my spirit to do it. He said, you continue to go live Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Then we pull back a few times a year. I got called when I in 1998 and have been in this house serving right for those years. My, I, my point for saying all of this, there are other prophets that have way more followers than Lanika Scott. I found that I was a prophet in 1998. There have been offers and ministry offers that I've rejected and I turned down because I could see where the people were trying to Come after the, the wealth anointed. They didn't really want the God. I said, I turn that down. I just don't show up on people's stages just to make a name for myself. My point for saying all of that, and I pray that somebody is hearing me tonight. God, I pray that somebody is hearing me tonight. I recently said, if you don't want me to have it, whatever the it may be, that I don't want it. I want your will. That is it. Because when I die and when I stand before a holy God, I want him to say, well done, my good and my faithful servant. Not my busy servant that was doing stuff that she had no business doing that I didn't tell her to do. Dying to the will, right? I can pick up the phone right now. I have connect all over the world right now if I wanted to. Get me on this stage so that I can minister in front of 5,000 people, 10,000 people, but I can't. Because until God say it, until God open the door, I hope I'm having somebody tonight dying of the self, whatever that may be. I'm not saying that that's your story because it is not, but I'm just teaching from a place of we got to make sure that our heart is right. That we got to make sure that we ain't trying to make no stage for ourselves. That only God, it is only through the grace of God that he's the one that so promotes and he's the one that sit people down. He is the one that bring the favor. He is the one that releases the favor to men. We got to make sure that our hearts are right. Time of reflection, 
self-examination. Not my will, but thine will be done, God. Not for selfish gain, not for selfish promotion, not for anything but what do you want me to have, Father? What are you saying about this thing, Father? And then also that speaks to a, even a, a lack or a poverty mindset. I'm just barely getting by. I'm just going to be in my humble place. because No, if Father wants you to have more, then get it. Then be it. Then do it. Write the books. Do what he tell you to do. The main thing is just obedience. Obedience. Obedience across the board. Quick obedience. Swift obedience. Moving when he say move. Doing what he tell you to do. How he want you to do it. That's what it is about. That is what it is about. Obedience. Self-reflection repenting, right? And even humility, humbling ourselves under the mighty hand of God because he knows what is best. He knows what is best for your life. He knows and understands every intricate piece of your life. He understands it. He was the one that created you. He does. We got to go to him. We have to go to him for instructions. You've got to hear from him. And I pray, right? Any type of anointing, um, um, I pray any type of distraction um, that have been sent your way, that there will be an anointing to deal with it. I mean, that the anointing will be released on you to help you with the distractions. Even in your mind, if there have been uh, um, um, dark daggers that have been sent to your mind um, by the witches and even the warlocks to, to also cause chaos, right? From you being double-minded, from you not hearing from God, that, that God will release an anointing to bring the fire, his fire to drive that stuff out where the deliverance will be your portion for you to line up right. Because when you line up, and I'm not saying that things are perfect because we are in a fallen world, but when you line up to the best of your ability, giving God all that you have, right? Things will line up around you. They have to. It has to change. And so that means also relationships, the relationships that the father has sent you, the people that is around you, the people that is walking with God, that they're in your midst, right? You need to look at all of that. Remember, it is a season of reflection. It is a time to restructure some things, right? It is a time to regroup, okay? This time of the year, as I shared before, the teshuva, it is very important. Okay. It is very important. So let me just read just a list of things really quickly before we get off. The this, this season of Jehovah begins at the beginning of Elul and goes all the way to Yom Kippur, the holiest day of the year on God's calendar. This is right around this time, you all. We got to be in tune with what daddy is doing, what his kingdom is doing. I don't care what type of church denomination you grew up in, even if your parent will pass this no, we got to be, I, even as I'm talking about this, I feel such a holy heat around me. Father, this father, he does things during this time of the year. Yom Kippur is a day of fasting, prayer, and repentance as well. It also symbolized the future judgment, right? Of when Yeshua, that's our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, will come back and judge the earth. And on that day, we definitely don't want to be found with no, in this article, it says bitterness, jealousy, selfishness, pride, following the young and poor feast of Sukkot, which symbolizes the wedding feast of the lamb. When we observe these special times on God's calendar, we are essentially practicing for our future wedding day with Yeshua. Therefore, think of the season of Teshuvah as a wedding rehearsal. I even had last night, I'm, when I tell you, I'm being so real with you all, I had a uh, um, and this isn't for anybody to say, oh, oh, I'm just going to back away from her coaching because she ain't right with God. No, <laughs> if I won't write, right, in some sense, I wouldn't be telling you to get right with God. But I had a dream last night, and in the dream, I was dressed in this beautiful gown. It was so beautiful. But one of my shoes, 
right? Wasn't fitting. And so I'm here, I am trying to put on the shoe, <laughs> right? Before this wedding. And I was like, oh my God. So when I woke up and I was reflecting on it, I said, okay, my footing is off, right? We got to make sure that foundation is good. Right? But God was showing me, right? I said that because they're talking about the wedding in this article. We better be prepared. We have to be prepared. Number one, acknowledge and forsake sin. Write them down if you got to. Write them all down. Pride, greed, right? Write them on down. The sin, okay? Search me, oh God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any grievous in way in me and lead me into everlasting. Psalm 139, 23 through verse 24, right? That's a beautiful song. I feel God's presence when I just said that. <laughs> Yes. So um, someone just read, which I just put it up there. So I saw it. Dr. Sharon Nesmith follows the calendar. Do you see why she's so blessed? She does. Right. And God is getting a lot of his even apostles and prophets um, where they're studying it. Right. It says, ask yourself these three questions. Do you know the Lord Jesus? Do you know Yeshua personally? Do you truly love God with all of your heart, your mind, your soul, your strength? Do you love your neighbor? Some of you, oh, he checked me on this one. I was like, oh, my heart had turned. And so I think I shared with you a last time, my people meter was getting too high. I was like, uh, a lot of people think that I'm an extrovert. I'm actually an introvert more so. So when people are pulling so much. And because I feel things so deeply, I may not even tell people what I feel or sense or even see, right? It, it affects me. And, and, and sometimes I start to get aggravated, aggravation, right? So I was like, I got to pull away. But in that, I realized that since I've been in this place of reflection, I was like, wow, I don't want to treat anybody wrong. I realize I've treated people wrong too. Can we just be real, right? You got it. We got to do all of that. So how am I treating other people? God, you know, what's going on in that heart? So you got to acknowledge it, forsake it, repent, regret the transgression, okay? Regret the transgression. I'm going to read the scripture before you. I love the scripture. This is a scripture that I've been reading too, is um, I'll place the article in our coaching group, okay? For those of you who are part of the inner circle. The sacrifices of God are a broken and a contrite heart. Oh God, you will not despise. So basically he was saying a contrite heart. Like he's not going to turn people away who have a contrite heart. Like he's going to look at that thing, right? That is being remorseful. Okay. I'm, I'm being remorseful. There's is a repentant heart, regretful heart. I regret Doing you like this, God, I regret doing this to this person, right? People have feelings too. God has feelings. I regret it. So basically in this scripture, David crying out the other day, I was reading, you know what? What made David cry out like this? And I said, woo, it was a whole lot that David had did. <laughs> right? I asked, I think for the first time ever, what made David cry out like this? Psalm 51 created, because this is where I went to first. After I got rebuked, I went to Psalm 51. I got on my knees and I began to read it. And I saw some stuff in that scriptures, y'all, that I ain't seen ever before since I've been reading this over 20 something years. And I said, whoo, this is deep. I read some more. That I, I saw some more. Some more stuff just leaked off the pages. And then I said, well, what made David cry out like this? Right? What was going on in David's life? Right? So, so the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit and a broken contract heart. So our king desires, the Lord desires humility. But here's the thing. Somebody type this below. Humility and honesty. So don't run. Don't hide. Don't act like you're not, uh, like don't deny it. Okay. So number three, confess the transgression and make amends even if you've hurt someone that's also a part of this time of the year the teshuva i'm going to put this scripture on yeah thank you all for putting that down let me put it on here um dawn was the last person near the verse humility and honesty and then i'm going to put in my um 
the one that I just wrote down. Uh oh, people, y'all writing so fast. If we confess our sins, then he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, right? And then the Bible even goes on to say, then if we say that we have not sinned, then we make him a liar. We know that he is not a liar, right? So it's so liberating to come clean, confessing your sins before God and others is an essential step, right, in the teshuva, okay? The Bible says a confession is prayer. It also brings healing, right? It brings healing as well. Offering a gift that may also go hand in hand to it. God, would you like me to offer a gift during this time as well? And then accept God's forgiveness and move forward in faith. So now you have, after you feel like, okay, he's cleansed you, you're good. You don't still feel that tug to confess some things and put it out, right? Then you you now focus on the Romans 8 and 1, which I shared at the beginning of this teaching. There's no, no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus, right? Those who walk after the spirit and not after the flesh. Okay. The Bible also says in Philippians 3, 13 through 14. I love that one. I'm going to put both scriptures on. So if you want to screenshot them, you can screenshot the scripture. I'm going to put that on. And then I'm going to also put this other one on, which is a very familiar passage of scripture. Many of you know what that is. Um, and that is found in Philippians 3, 13 through verse 14. Okay. And that scripture says, brothers, I do not consider um, that I've made my own, but one thing I do forgetting what lies behind and straying forth for what lies ahead. I press toward the goal, the prize, um, the mark of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. So basically what he is saying here and what we know Yes, we do have to acknowledge our sin. We do have to repent. We do have to make sure that we're in right standing with God and with others. But we cannot stay in a place of, oh, 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 I messed up. I messed up. I did wrong. I messed up. What was me? All of that. Because what happens with that, it sends us down the wrong path of condemnation. And he doesn't want us to do that. So once we have humbled ourselves, uh, examine, got things right with God. We feel that peace. We can feel it. We feel the grace, right? Now it is about, all right, now I keep on going, you know, toward the, the mark, the high price, which is Christ Jesus. I walk with him, right? My, my life, my life is a reflection, right? Because I am in his presence. I pray that this has helped somebody tonight. Again, I am going to put the article in our group for those of you who are a part of our group. Praise God. I'm going to put the article in the group so that you can see it for those of you who are part of the inner circle. I'm just going to put study on tonight's coaching in the group. And um, for those of you who have no clue as to what I'm talking about, what group, those of you who are watching by way of YouTube, I have an inner circle um, coaching that I do every Tuesday at nine, I mean, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And it's just a $27 monthly seat. That is it. All right. And so we meet every week and it's really about spiritual um, advancement, you know, just growing spiritually, getting delivered and free for some things. And also some business coaching whenever the Lord lead. I do share a lot of my life, circumstances, issues, transparent moments, but also how I got the breakthrough. Most of it is obedience. I met with another, um, some of you may be familiar with Sarah Robbins, right? I'm going to shift a little bit. Um, she is, uh, uh, in, she's a, she's in network marketing, right? So we're in the same industry, direct sales, um, multi-millionaire also have earned eight figures in this industry. She's done very well. So, um, today I got a chance for the first time to meet her face to face, um, via zoom. Like it wasn't like a bit out but we connected. And then the whole time as we were um, talking, it was so, it really wasn't funny, but I just kept thinking, wow, I now see why she's been so successful. 
And she we, she talked about the obedience, obedience. So Sarah Robbins, who all know Sarah Robbins, for those of you who are on, Sarah Robbins. So she she's been a woman that's just been obedient to God. I could I could just say instant obedience. Just that's what we talked about. Obeying God, doing what he tells us to do, saying what he tells us to say, following what he tells us to follow. That's it. I want you all tonight. All right. Because he will bless your business. I'm, I'm, I am living proof. He will breathe over your business when you obey him. And even in your household, right? Your husband, your children do right by your husband, do right by your, your children, right? He will breathe over your business when you do what you're supposed to do. Okay. Your personal walk and your relationship with him. Um, do a, um, Rate yourself, okay? Nobody has to know, but you and, you and God. Like on a scale of one to 10, you know, 10 being the highest, like rate yourself right now. Like if you had to sit down and rate your spiritual walk with Father, what, what will it be? The Holy Spirit, like really, what will it be? I want, this is a time of reflecting you all, because again, for those of you who are looking at it now, maybe you didn't hear me in the beginning. This is also a season of promotion and demotion. All right. I have seen people get demoted and drop levels in the spirit. I understand it more now. I have seen it by dishonoring, by dishonoring people. I'm, t I'm telling you, I'm like, whoo, it's, it's serious. It is serious. Right. So I want you all to just take some time to reflect. We're about to get off. I'm going to pray. Take some time to reflect. Ask the father what it is that you um, have done. Um, that's not pleasing in his sight and, and just don't be afraid to repent about it. He knows it anyway. <laughs> he does. All right. So um, let me pray. And then I'll look at um, some of the comments just to make sure I'm not like missing anything that may need to be said or even asking a question. So father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that we all would draw closer to you. I thank you, God, just for your grace and your mercy over our lives and you keeping us. And I praise you right now just for your instructions, God. I thank you that we would be better servants, Lord, that we would be better um, <clears throat> servants in your kingdom, representing you well, that we will represent you well. I thank you for the grace to do that and just to hear your voice and hear your instructions for our lives. Lord, as you are calling us to regroup, to reset, even recommit our, our time and our energy and our focus and even our resources in your kingdom and even back to you, I thank you for that. I thank you for the grace and the ability. Hallelujah. And I just thank you, God, just for your redemptive power being shown over our lives. So Jesus Christ redeeming us. Hallelujah. And we are free through him. It is only through him, only through him that we are free, only because you sent him, your only begotten son. And we thank you so much. And we just pray this prayer in Jesus mighty name. So I could feel some healing happening um, in emotions. I pray and I receive that too for myself. <laughs> Cause sometimes when our emotions are all of the place, it does can make, it can make us a little discombobulated in some areas, especially with our relationship with God. For those of you who are in my business too, and you have felt me a little pulled back over the last few days, that's why I've been doing a lot of examining. All right. So I'm going to read, um, if there's anything in particularly, that may need to be said. And if not, then we are going home. <laughs> then we are going home. Yes. So especially since at a time through September the 18th. Yeah. So for those of you who feel like the Lord has been leading you to fast, this is why. This is that time again where we're, we're fasting a lot. So like in the spring and then also the fall. And a lot of us as believers, we focus on the spring, but then this time of the year, we like, I feel you, God, but I don't know quite what, and still be doing stuff, right? But he's observed, he, he observes during this time of the year. All right. I think that's it. 
Oh, wow. Praise the Lord. I don't know who wrote this, but I'll say, I'll just put it up. I had a vision of you, Lanika, um, placing a plate and utensils on a table. Well, praise the Lord for that. Yes. Yeah, so ask, ask Father about his will for your life. All right. That's something that I have been asked in um, lately. Like, who am I? God, what do you want me to do? Like, I, I, I know you all may say, you, you ask God that? I still to this day. I'm like, who are you? What do you ask me to do? So Latasha says, come on, King Jesus. We hear you. Yes. I just had a vision. Is this Letitia having these visions? Because I can't. It's just this Facebook user. I just had a vision of a sink faucet running and I hear water. So that is cleaning, right? He's cleaning us up. The other day we saw, I saw a vision of a water. It was like a water pitcher. It was, oh my God, he was just pouring water. And Danita, she actually felt the water on her heart area, chest area. This is tremendous confirmation, needed understanding. It has been nine months of deep and very humbling cleansing. Wow. Yeah. And then some cleanings even take longer, you all. I'm going to be honest. Somebody said spiritual heart surgery. We praise God for that, the spiritual heart surgery. And you know, okay, so this is, this is, this is, this is something that I want to just say. It's two points I want to make. It's two points I want to make. I'm going to put Latasha's thing up because I can feel God on that while I'm talking. Y'all can screenshot that. There's two points that I want to make. The first one is sometimes when you are under um, long seasons of warfare, right? And I mean, long seasons of warfare, you can close up your heart as a means to protection. Okay, so I met with a powerful, um, outside of my spiritual mentor, I met with a powerful woman and man of God the other day. And um, the man of God, he had visions all the time of the Lord Jesus visiting him. And for some reason, I felt led to share with him the rebuke that the father had given me. And I heard his name, their names. And so when I called them, and so he said, you know, it's interesting that you would say this because something similar happened to him. But then he said, you know, what was happening is I had gone through long seasons of warfare and I began to close my heart. Uh, right. And this is not to make any excuses. I'm not. But sometimes we do know we need to know well, how did we get there? Okay, Just like the women of God said, oh, wow, it's been very humbling for me. I've gone through long seasons of this has been a long time of just humbling myself, right? Getting it out. We can, or you can go through such seasons of demonic attack and warfare where you can begin to close your heart so that you're protecting yourself. Um, you don't trust, but what happens is if you're not careful and sometimes it's just hard to, to manage both at the same time, right? You can end up closing your heart on the very one that is able to help you the most. Who do we know that to be? God, our Father, right? The Lord Jesus, the Holy Spirit. And so I knew, I said, oh, that's why the Father was cleansing and he was healing our hearts, okay? So I wanted to make that point. And the other point, I totally forgot what I was going to say, but I, I do hope that... <laughs> You all, maybe if I can remember it, I'll type it up, right? It was two things that I wanted to say. Father, was it? Yeah, it was two things that I wanted to say. But so you got to also be mindful of that. Oh, thank you, Father. The other point I wanted to make, no, and this is very, very, very important, you all. I'm, I'm telling you, I've seen people miss promotions, mantles, anointings because of this. You can't blame anybody. Yeah, it hurt. The divorce was hard. He treated you wrong. Those children that you have, and you're like, I cannot believe they're taking me through this. I did everything that I knew to do. I don't know who this is for. I'm ministering to somebody because I was going to get off. But he showed me this so clear. 
that man that cheated on you, that he went out and slept with someone that could have been your best friend, whatever it may be, adultery, I don't know what it is, your parents, stop holding them in bondage. You got to get free. You got to be liberated from that stuff, no matter what anybody did to you. Your response is your responsibility. No matter the betrayal, no matter the backstabbing, no matter what took place, no matter the ministry hurt, makarashi, dalarabasiata, no matter the abuse, your response is your responsibility. And that is, and the Father want you to act right. Even in the midst of the pain, the abuse, the shame, because that is how you are promoted. That is how you are mantled for greatness. That is how you get the swords in your hand. How you go through when you go through, when they mess up, when they turn their back on you, when they act. A, a, a little plum crazy fool when they and everybody is ar around you are unfaithful when you're the only faithful one that is how you elevate okay so those were the two things warfare many times i i said it i said whoo my worship the war has affected my worship but that don't mean i gotta stop worshiping god He's holy. He's been too good for me, right? See, I can minister to you all tonight from this place because I have dealt with this type of stuff. Still having to show up for the people after being betrayed. It is the worst thing. But to God, I do this for you and not for the people. Your response, I need somebody to type that and then we're going home. That's what the other thing was. Your response is your responsibility. I'm, I have had to, behind the scenes, when people did not know the battles, the same people who were spending money to try to take my life, take me out, take my husband out, the same people I've had to pray for, fast for, stand in the gap for, your response is your responsibility. So when people would see me showing up, like in our last um, thing that happened, elevation, and how we went 17 levels in one week. That didn't just happen from nowhere. The father was looking high, looking that he was sitting high, looking down low. You passed the test. Can we pass some tests? We're going to pass some tests. We're going to be mature, men and women of God, daughters of Zion. We're going to be mature. We're going to be mature. We're going to pass some tests. Amen. Amen. Your response is your responsibility. So I'm going to put that up. Um, Lynn, <laughs> I'm going to put it up because your face is up there as well. Your response is your responsibility. So God bless you all. You all have a great night and invite someone to the inner circle again. 27 monthly seed for it, right? I rarely put up my um, cash app, but I'll put it up tonight. Um, LS, I think it's LS Millionaire Mom. I think, I think that's it, y'all. Is that it, y'all? Let me see, and then we're gonna go home for real. If you want to sow a seed, okay, because maybe you're not called to do the inner circle, and I'm not trying to convince or anybody to do it neither, okay. I'm just trying to say, I think this is my cash out. <laughs> I think that's it. Yeah. All right. So you guys have a blessed night. God bless you. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Let's pass the test. Let's pass the test, y'all. Bye-bye.